This is a two-part Weldment tutorial. In building this truss model, I'm going to go into the use of the grid system to form a skeleton template. I'm also going to create and model structural members of different sizes, form joins, use the trim extend feature to align members, and add gussets, weld beads, and end caps. So let's start by going to the Weldments tab. And then we're going to go and create some reference geometry. So first we click on the front plane because we want to draw on the front plane. And we're going to go to Insert, Reference Geometry, Grid System. And this is going to help us to create an array pretty quickly. So we're going to, we're drawing on the front plane. We're going to make our truss 2.5 meters long with a slight overhang. And uh, here's our cross member. And we'll make this 1.5 meters high. And then we'll have our overhang 250 millimeters. Okay, so now we can mirror about the middle. So let's turn this into construction geometry. Mirror this sketch. Select the two lines. Oh, first we need, of course, we need our cross, our cross section to create some triangulation for some stiffness. So now let's mirror. Okay. So here in the grid system, we can select three, we can select four. Um, we're basically creating an array, but this array is customizable. So if you go back into grid system, you can edit any of the spacing dimensions and change the spacing for individual parts. So I've made the two middle parts 250 mil apart. Let's put that back to standard 1.5 meters or 150 millimeters. Okay, so just a quick way of putting together an array without making a 3D sketch or without actually clicking the array feature. So we've gone into structural members. We're going to use ISO rectangular tube and we'll use the largest tube. Then we're going to select a group. So one, two, two members. We can't select everything because it, it just won't let us allow, it won't let us to select certain things. So you can play around with um, what to select and what not to select. So we've collect, select, selected these two sections and then we can create a, a join between them. So here I've got my join and I've gone to locate profile and I've located above the line. So let's select the next group and I'll show you how this was how this was Done. So I select my first line, I select my second line, and my profile needs to be realigned. So we go down to locate profile, or we change the angle first. And then we go down to locate profile and it'll zero in on the profile. And then we click the vertex and it'll take us to that point on the line. So any vertex we select, it'll zero that in on the line. So change the angle, go to locate profile just so happens that this rectangular tube it seems to be always at the wrong orientation when we first insert it so we have to keep going in locating the profile changing the angle and then clicking the vertex to get it in position where we want it there we are okay Notice that the apply corner, I've selected the first option there. So this is group five. Locate the profile. And because this is a single group, this is going to rotate 
all five items in one go. So clicking locate your profile, click the vertex you want, brings it up onto the line. I mean, you could you could zero in. You don't have to go to the bottom. I'm, I'm just for neatness. I'm moving things up and and for reasons that I'll explain later while I'm matching to the top of the line. So here you can see this is the join I formed at the top, and then a slightly different join further down. Okay, so we need to create a different structural member of a different size now. So this is why I've come out to create a second structural member. So we go back in, and now I'm selecting a different size structural member. Let's click new group, and we're going to use these cross braces. Check the profile out. We can go to locate. That will zero in. We want to change the angle again. Now this time I think I'm going to leave them where they are. I don't need to move them around the line. This is our second group. And let's, let's locate the profile. And of course it's the wrong way around. Click OK. I'm happy with that, but there's a problem with this member. So because it's matched up to the line exactly, it's drawn it right through the existing horizontal beam. So we but we can go to trim extend. So bodies to be trimmed. Click the bodies we want to trim back. And then the bodies we want to trim against. Okay, I've select, selected faces. So we change we can change from faces to bodies, make sure that's called selected. We're trimming against these bodies, so we want to trim the, the entire part. So now it's given us a list of parts that we can keep or discard. So really, it's the default is actually what we want, but we could actually keep the bit that's poking out the bottom and trim everything between the keep and the discard if we wanted to. But we do actually only want to keep what's uh, selected by default. There you can see all that's left is what we actually need. Now we need to create some cross supports between our trusses. But thankfully, by using the grid system, we've actually already created some reference geometry. So let's go into this grid. So we have a series of sketches, including a 3D sketch. So if we show this 3D sketch, it's actually drawn links between our vertexes. And we can use that. So if we go into Surface Extrude and use this sketch, which is our original template sketch, we need to take an angle. So these two lines, I set at an angle of 30.96 degrees. So let's copy that. And we can use that in our next truss. So let's go back into Worldments. Structural member, ISO rectangular tube. This time we're going to use a smaller tube. And we're going to select new group. And we're going to select these intermittent lines. A sketch geometry. We're going to locate the profile, and we're going to we're going to paste the angle we've just referenced to put this at the right angle, and that's that's the angle I want it at. 
it's the profile's in the wrong position right now, but we can sort that out later. But for now, let's draw the other side. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use the 30.96 degrees, but we're going to flip the profile first. So locate profile. And we're going to select the top vertex to zero on the line, flip it by 180 degrees. Now we're going to minus 30.96. So 149.04 degrees gives us our position. But again, we're a little off where we want it to be. We want it really in the middle of the of that larger beam. So let's go into structural member. Even if we located the profile, we wouldn't change it. So let's go into the profile sketch. So we offset one of the vertexes. So let's take this vertex, delete the links, realign the vertex by the point of origin. Dimension that vertex. So I'm going with 25, 25 millimeters in this case, but any dimension will do. Right, so okay, back into structural member, locate the profile, and then we can select that offset vertex. And we've moved the entire profile into position exactly where we want it. So let's do the same the other side. See, sketch 15 is our sketch for our profile. Let's locate it. OK. Take that vertex. I think here we're already located by the vertex. So when we dimension this and come out, this should automatically jump into position this time. Yes, yeah, so as we're using the vertex already, it's jumped into the right position. Now we just need to trim because these beams are going right through the geometry. And we need to select our trim bodies. And this time everything, again, it's the, it says everything's being kept, but realistically, We are discarding. So let's get rid of extension. So then you can see what we're really keeping. So nothing's been extended now. So it was a bit of an illusion before. So you can see the end in exactly the right position. And that's our cross members.